Good evening and welcome to worship. For our service today, you will need an ELW, uh, which is a red hymnal. Hopefully you can find one close to you. The hymns are in the back of the book and you'll see the numbers there for when we are singing. We take another moment of silence before we begin. Let us pray together. Merciful God, your son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high, just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals, so he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which had been told them that they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and equated with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked 
in his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, For whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup? that the Father has given me?
the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish, Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing round it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation did you bring against this man? And they answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not did him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jewish leaders replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? And Pilate replied, 
I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jewish leaders again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and he had him flogged and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, striking him in the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jewish leaders answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and he asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the leaders cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was on the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about noon. He said to the Jewish leaders, Here is your king. And they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. And then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself he went out to the place that they call the place of the skull which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. And there they crucified him and with two others one on each side and Jesus in the middle between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross, and it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. <sighs> Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. It was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. 
And then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. This man said, I am the king of the Jews, Pilate answered. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and they divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. And they also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Please stand as you're able for the balance of this reading. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. 
But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now, there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. This is the passion, according to John. I invite you to take a deep breath. We just heard the story of Jesus' passion, the story of Jesus' death. We take time this Good Friday in our hearing and in our imagination to experience the noise of the crowd, the cries of Jesus' enemies, the pounding of nails to wood, the procession of feet 
along a path. But perhaps it is the silences that rule this day. It is the simple invitation of the liturgy of Good Friday for all of us to be silent before Christ. We reflect in silence on the word of God. And as we reflect, children and I think adults wonder why in the world we call this day good. As the Passion reading ends, Jesus is dead, and we are left with all creation holding our breath, remembering and proclaiming Christ crucified on a cross. Good Friday reminds us that it was on a cross some 2,000 years ago, two long paths converged and intersected. One was our humanness, and the other, God's mercy. We hear of what it means to be human and how the first of humanity go against John, God's wishes. And then almost simultaneously, the Bible tells us of God's mercy, God's pursuit in love. Oh, to be sure, there are times in our history both collectively and individually, when we have been very unworthy to receive God's love. Still, God's mercy perseveres over humanity. This evening is a time when we reflect on how the worst part of our humanity, that sinful part, can cause such acts of death and destruction. So we reflect on our sin, those places where we fail to love as God would have us love. Now Jesus Christ, whom we confess to be both human and God, brings these two paths into one. It is on the cross that he takes our sinfulness to himself. And... He represents in himself the mercy of God. We humans with our sins and God with mercy come together in Jesus. And so this evening we stand in awe of this mystery of God made flesh in Jesus and we reflect in silence. We will take time to peer at a cross and wait to exhale when the story will continue Easter with a better part of humanity and a cry of resurrection. The passion story of Jesus, the story of the cross, illustrates the dark side of humanity that we still face today. The fears, the intrigue, the indifference, and the cruelty of people are mirrored in the execution of the one we call the Savior of the world. The shouts of crucify him, the denial of Peter, the lies of Judas are really a familiar scene in our world today, aren't they? We see this reality all around in a world filled with war, filled with a lust for power, the untruths that inundate us, and our own denial of Christ through our mistreatment of those whom we love most. This, in part, is what we place on the cross this night. We confess that we are human. These converging paths remind us of God's mercy and how it enters our path of being human and all that that means. But after all this time, 
it still rings a bit odd that the love and mercy of God is through, shown through the death of God's son on a cross. But as we look around, we can see that we still need a savior. The cries of Hosanna, God save us, that we shouted on Palm Sunday. Makes sense today, Good Friday as well. We all give our authority away to someone. So why not a suffering servant? After all, the heart of the good news of Jesus Christ is found in the cross, in the sacrificial death of Jesus. Because of this, the cross has become the chief Christian symbol, a cross of all things. Those of us who from time to time wear a cross around our necks never want to forget that is behind, what is behind this symbol. It's a place where we see in a whole new way what it means to confess we are human and Jesus is God. The cross is our constant reminder that death will never, ever again have the last word. Death and life, sin and love have been forced together on a cross. Two converging paths. To get to the resurrection, we must go through the cross. The cross must always come first. But remember, for God, even out of evil, good can come. Tonight on the cross, we find the one who came to die. Well, there is something good about the cross, something good about this day, this Good Friday. It is the beginning of the forgiveness of sins. The beginning of our coming together in a whole new way. But still our human condition continues. We don't always have the capacity to know what we are doing. But because of Jesus, we see a picture of what it means that God is for us. This night, paper is placed on your chairs, and in a little while, you'll be invited forward to nail your reality of what it means to be human for you on the cross. So on that cross, place sins Maybe. But let me more importantly invite you to place on there where your humanity catches you. Is it in your hurt and pain? In your doubt and sorrow? In your worry, your temptation, your wrongdoing? Nail to the cross your confession. Or if it is easier for you, you may hand marker I your confession and we can place it on the cross for you. But nail to the cross your confession that you are human and God is God. And leave your humanness there for a moment. For it's on the cross that Christ's love becomes real. We wait to exhale. And Christ will come again. We are human. And thank goodness, 
Jesus is God in the flesh. Amen. Let us pray, siblings in Christ, for the whole church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for Bishop Eaton, Bishop Lori, Pastor Eric, and all servants of the church and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, other ministers and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism.
almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church, increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism, give them new birth as your children, and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Grant that the people you called and elected as your own may be blessed by the promise of your covenant and that they may be a blessing to all nations. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and the lives of Christians. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority 
so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those who are willing and able, please stand. Behold the life-giving cross on which hung the Savior of the whole world.
cross on which hung the Savior of the whole world. Behold the life-giving cross on which hung the Savior of the whole world. Oh, come, let us worship him.
We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. May God be merciful and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among the nations. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by the cross, joy has come into the world. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. 